Thank you for the introduction, Paolo. The bad news is my voice is a little bit off today. Hope you can hear me. The good news is I don't have to talk very much. I only have 10 minutes, and uh, there'll be some video of people talking too. Now, when you, uh, when you can deliver light to your body or your brain, interesting things can happen, but you've got to know how to do it. And um, this is a picture of how we do it. It is targeted at specific areas, and we do a lot of targeting, you know. Uh, we have to control the power, the wavelength, the, the pulse rate, and so on. But you can get really profound uh, outcomes. It can literally elevate the functioning of your brain to a better performance. If you're not well, it can, it can help to get you better. It can actually even change your life. Now, let's look at how it can help with your brain. I know a number of you are actually into meditation to various levels. There have been discussions about uh, training in alpha and theta. It's, it really works uh, for, for beginners. It, I think it really helps to take you there. But interesting things happen when you take it to a much higher frequency. Long-term meditators have these endogenous high-frequency um, brain waves. So it's, why does it take to trigger it? So I want to share a presentation. He's going to help me to speak here. He's, you know, Sanjay Manchanda did a presentation last year in one of the conferences. And, and uh, his experience as a meditation researcher using the ability to change the frequency. Now, of course, we are more interested in meditation, not just in health benefits. And so there are many studies that show that meditators have increased gamma at rest compared to non-meditators. Not only that, many meditations show high gamma activity in several areas of the cortex when the, when the, when the meditation is happening. And, but this gamma activity is not limited to around 40 hertz. It actually can be anywhere in the range of 40 to 200 hertz. So we, wanted, we asked the question, what if we were to able to induce this kind of gamma activity in the brain somehow. Now, I'm also a neurofeedback practitioner. I've been doing neurofeedback for many years. And basically, we haven't done gamma neurofeedback. We even tried it recently. It's very difficult to do. Firstly, people didn't think about gamma till recently. Secondly, it's very difficult to do because that signal is hard to detect from the brain. It really attenuates through the brain, and it's, uh, there's a lot of muscle artifact. You can't really do it properly. So then we thought, what if we were to use the V-Light helmet to induce high levels of high-frequency gamma in the brain? Then what would happen? So we had V-Light make an experimental unit for us that we could flash at any frequency we like. And so the first unit they gave us could go up to 200 hertz. And we started to experiment with this. And I tried it on myself. And it was, pretty, it was pretty amazing. So, so I noticed that an immediate deepening of my PNSE state and an increase in sensory clarity, increase in joy, and increase in a deep calm. And this stayed for a long time. It's almost, for me, it's almost put me over the edge, caused some kind of permanent shift and deepening. So I was excited to have other people try it. So here we have Chuladasa. So Jay referred to him as the author of The Mind Illuminated, a meditation teacher, trying it. And we had him, we started low at a low frequency of stimulation around one hertz and went up slowly and had him uh, talk about his experience at various frequencies, especially at multiples of 40, such as 80 hertz, 120 hertz, 160 hertz, and 200 hertz. And he reported that uh, at 200 hertz, he, he felt that it helped him to have easy access to the highest levels in his system, which is level 9 and 10, which Jay talked about. And, and so he said, oh, that's interesting. We'll have other people try it. And other people started to report, other long-term meditators are the most people we've tried that with, and they report something similar. Here's Shinzen trying this recently, and Shinzen reported increased feelings of vibratory flow, uh, deep calm, a no-thought state, and then woke up having more energy to function. So, 
We're actually just about to start a major meditation study for long-term meditators using this device and understanding what happens uh, to long-term meditators. So watch out for it. I think it's going to do, change a lot of things in, in the understanding of meditation. Now, how about uh, normal people like me who don't meditate, people who have learning uh, disabilities and people who want to get a better brain? This was a study that, was, uh, that has used what we call photobiomodulation, that's the field we're in, delivering laser or uh, uh, red and near-infrared light to the brain. So this study done at the University of uh, Texas at Austin showed that the memory can be retrieved very quickly, more, much quicker than, say, a sham, and more accurately. On the, on the lamp chart, the, the black bar shows the treated people. You can see uh, the lower bar, the black one, shows how, how much uh, the, the, uh, less time it requires to retrieve the memory, whereas the sham is much higher. On the right side, uh, it's talking about accuracy. The black bar has much higher accuracy than the sham. The sham, you know, people were tired, so they were lower, maybe. So, it's now proving out in studies. It helps with uh, memory retrieval. And we have devices that are out in the you know, in research in the military. And this was a, a study on detection of threat and response to threat. So and we measured with a fact size and compared to sham, it is much higher with a fact size of 1.4. So that's very significant. No, uh, for normal people, we use athletics as well. And here is someone who actually won a Californian championship for his weight using our device for training. So in summary, for, um, for the normal brain, we are looking at meditation, looking at cognition and learning, uh, and sports performance is bearing out, but we want to be able to validate in studies. And clinical applications, Here's someone with Parkinson's disease using a combination of our uh, a device plus a, a form of uh, treatment called consciousness, conscious walking. I'm going to show before. Yeah. After. Here you go. You coming? Yeah. So it can have a profound effect on how you're able to use light on the brain. And um, there were indications of dementia. dementia. I could make no human sense out of what was going on around me. It was like being down the bottom of a, of a deep well. I had been taking supplements for uh, improving cognition and they did nothing. And I was knowledgeable in the field. So I knew what, what there was and the best was, was of no help whatsoever. So I went to their website, Violites, and I didn't really have any confidence in it whatsoever. And at the time, I half knew that I was doing it just to extend the period I'll be, I'll where I could, could still feel some hope. I, uh, I got it and, and tried it and uh, used it diligently. And one day I just woke up to the fact that it was working. What I'm talking about, I have not in any way been paid for. And that to me, it's of the utmost importance for people to know what I've gone through and how I've come out of it. And the way that I've come out of it is by using a device man made by Violight that uses infrared light. I know of nothing similar, comparable that, that I've ever heard of that I could accomplish what what this device has for me. Okay, uh, so these are stories and there's some of it that inspires us to do clinical trials to validate it. So some of the trials we have going on now, 
There's a major Alzheimer's disease trial we've started over eight sites for 228 patients, which is FDA reviewed. That there's a traumatic brain injury, traumatic brain injury trial that's also ongoing, and we are planning for some other trials as well. So it covers both healthy brains and it helps people、um, who have a condition. Thank you very much.